Since you're all tired and waiting, waiting for the decisive game this evening between Sweden and Germany, um, Sonia and I, we, we, just, we just decided to start with the breakup session. So it's my pleasure to introduce Sonia Zikri for you. Uh, to you. Sonia is um, heading the, um, the cultural section of the Süddeutsche Zeitung. And on the merits of the Süddeutsche Zeitung had been the acquisition of the Thomas Mann House uh, two years ago, the Thomas Mann House, which has been inaugurated on, on Monday, last Monday, by the federal president. So many thanks to, to the German newspapers and the German press in general and to the Süddeutsche Zeitung. And Sonja is much more, well, she had served in, in Moscow as correspondent for, for um, her newspaper and in the Middle East. And she will take the global part, um, the global part of the last two days conversation. I just would, well, I would like to, to put you some tasks in your doggy bags to bring at home and to continue to work. Um, so the three tasks from my perspective are first, deal with that tension between an institution and a society. We have seen from different speakers how institution can evaluate, but in fact we recognize that institutions are conservative by tradition, national bound by heritage, and mostly object driven. And that the actual challenges of, a, of our societies are not object driven. They are driven by global tasks and, and challenges as climate change, as migration, as the future of national states and a post-national policy. So that's for the first task. The second task is that we in the Western world have to question ourselves, do we really have a set of values? Or did we bring constantly contradiction to our own values with our policies abroad. To put it in other words, if democracy is driven by contradiction, how do we deal with societies who bring value to consumers? Is the model of a society in the 21st century democracy? Do we really want to be a the efforts of contradiction in a society and between societies, or will we content ourselves to be consumers in a perfectly managed society which do not need democracy? And put it further, are our institutions adapted to the 21st century? So do we have to split up the typical German corporatism or not? Do we still consider the international experts to be contained in a board or in an advisory committee? Or do we have to consider them as entirely as a part of our own institutions and split them up, bring them out to the international task? And lastly, is it a set of values or is it the power of aesthetics, what um, Wayne said yesterday, the impatience for other futures, the possibility of other worlds than to improve constantly an existing world? And the third task is to think about Europe. Is it really that narrative of peace which will drive us in the 21st century don't we have to recognize that Europe got a continent of constant fear and sorrow? Fear for migration, fear for climate change, sorrow for the future of our social systems. And is that the task of Europe in the 21st century? To live in fear and to close up? Or can we learn from our African partners that we have to become a continent of hope.
And what does that mean? Does that only mean circulation of objects? Does that only mean that in the cultural sector we are working closer together? Or does circulation mean that we have to open up our borders in an unknown way? And how do we deal with that issue, referring to the national states and to their, to their, to their fears about that migration issue? And that's something Sonia wanted to stress. Um, you just, you just uh, outlined um, the topics for the next one-week conference, I guess. Um, what I definitely want to add um, to the things An Andreas Görgen just mentioned is, I think there is an elephant in the room, in this wonderful cathedral-like industrial room, and the elephant is the crisis of the West. Um, we have been hearing a lot in the last days and very um, uh, brilliant ideas and very thoughtful proposals about how to deal with the institution of museum, how to um, rethink labeling, rethink cooperation. Um, but um, the thing is, as Andreas Görgen said, that it is there is an underlying, I would say to me, there is an underlying need um, of the institutions in the West of the rest of the world. To put it in other ways, you do have the big institutions um, in London, Berlin, New York, Russia. Um, I was... Um, delighted to, to talk to Zelfira Tregulova last year and see the new Tretyakov Gallery and have the outlines of what they are planning and what they achieved already. But what we heard already in, these, um, in, this, in this conference is also that there is a need of the rest of the world or there is a need in the West of the rest of the world, of the ideas coming here um, objects coming here, a different kind of cooperation. And looking at the crisis of the West, I would say there is also, as you mentioned, something I would call a resilience or um, a knowledge of how to deal with difficult times and difficult circumstances. And what we see now in the West, especially in Germany, is um, a fear, as you said, a political play with this fear, a deepening of this fear um, of the other. And um, something that can have deep impacts. And it's no, it's no surprise, or I found it very telling that um, Ko Yo Kwoi um, was talking about this obelisk in Kassel and she was mentioning that this was um, a very uh, uh, generous object to Kassel because it was telling a nice or a, 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 a good story about Kassel. But in fact, to me, looking at what is happening in Europe and especially in Germany at the moment, to me it comes as no surprise that um, there is a political um, uh, hostility and also in the society against this object, this piece of art, because it is telling a positive narrative of migration and of welcoming migrants to Germany. And at the moment, what we see is a, um, a growing stream of, or a growing tendency of questioning this um, and not even not even giving any kind of positive liberal narrative of what happened to Germany in 2015. And I think, as you said, we can and we would have to learn from other countries about how to deal with that. And if I have to, if I, if I may add one, one thing, what I found very, um, very, um, sobering on the one hand, but on the other hand also refreshing in this conference is 
um, when we ask what can culture do, um, culture can do as we heard the best and the worst. And we heard examples about uh, how culture can build bridges and uh, unite people, but we also heard examples about um, how culture can divide people. And uh, so the question is still open to me. Yeah, so certainly right to remember in, in Germany that culture does not hinder neither fascism, neither any, any extremism, and that the cultural elite has been a driving force for each and any of those, um, of those thoughts. Um, so if culture is not a remediate against the threats in a society, perhaps that's closer to Martin's thought, don't avoid conflict, be provocative. And the obelisk is perhaps a, a good example on that. Uh, by avoiding an object with an agency in a society, you do not answer the question. You just avoid any answer because you are in fear about the provocation behind that answer or behind the question. Um, and putting that back to what a foreign or a, a international cultural policies might do, perhaps there are three lessons learned from Martin. Go to each and any cooperation in challenging times and with challenging partners. Do not avoid to cooperate, but don't betray what you are doing with what you are aiming at with that cooperation. Um, I think the example of Dubai and what he did in Qatar and his stand and, and his stand on um, on the on the expo is a good example for that. The second is. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to stress the British example, but, but perhaps it was not a bad idea, a bad idea from the Victoria and Albert to ask Martin to lead the Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, and perhaps it would not be a bad idea for the German institutions to open up their minds and their hearts. And I'm happily, I happily will announce that we as a foreign ministry, we will suggest to the Goethe Institute, which is a German association, to open up and to elect new members who are not German, but who are closely linked to German culture. Uh, and this is a, well, a, sec a second learning out of, out of the last two days and out of the work of Martin. And third is, we have to democratize our institutions. Um, what was stressed in different ways, in several ways over the last two days, and it was interference in real life, it was the caretaking aspect of the cultural sector, well, it's just about the legitimacy of the institutions and the need for a new thinking of democracy. We are living in countries in which juries can decide on about a, a prison, about a prison questions, can decide about very important questions for each and any individual. So don't we have to bring in panels and juries to our work as administrations and as institutions. So not to consider them as visitors or customers, but making them a part of our internal reflection, how to evaluate and what we could bring with our expertise to them and link us more closely to the, um, to the challenges and the discussions in a society which is in fact not a homogeneous society, which is in fact not a society defined by the national boundaries. Um, and that might be very interesting to look at in, in, the, in the upcoming years with regard to several institutions here in Germany, one of them not so far away. That sounds great, sounds great. And um, it, it um, seems like the, the, the perfect way to do. Um, but you, you do have also from, like, from these two days of, of listening to, or I have from these two days of, of listening to really um, insightful uh, speeches, there, there still is this, this um, discrepancy. Um, you, you, we, we just heard in one of the talks how difficult it is to bring curators, artists, writers to Germany. So uh, you mentioned the question, do we want 
the piece of art, the book, probably the narrative, but we do not want the people. We can invite to, to some higher, like to some, to some post, we can invite people that do fit into this cultural landscape and they do get a visa, but there is a tension between the, the places where the objects come from and the people that live in these places and how the West Germany looks at this place and how it's dealing with it, or is it just taking the objects, taking the, 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 like the, the, the cultural um, uh, things that, that enrich our society or enrich our cultural landscape and we forget about the rest. So the, the, there is still a dis discrepancy between culture and the people producing this culture. And I do not see how we bridge this so far. And I do not even see that there are programs, artists at risk, um, scholars at risk, but they are not in any case sufficient as far as I know. Okay. So you, you want me to answer as a German diplomat? Yes. Oh, no. I want you to answer. I want you to answer. So to, to all of my team here in the room, the task is to change the visa policies. That will be very difficult from a cultural direction. Um, now certainly, certainly the, the question is raised. Is culture about the circulation of objects? Or do we mean a different culture which would include the circulation of human beings? And is the restitution of objects, is that in fact excluding excluding an object with an agency about colonization from our countries by bringing it back? Um, or is there other means about circulation? And do we have, perhaps, do we have to take care more about the cultural institutions in Africa? Is there any reason why Senghor's plan, plan of a national museum in, in, in Senegal has never been answered by Europe and the National Museum will open in October this year and it has been built by China. Um, is there any reason why in all those museums we will see, we will see, we will see many museums in Africa in the upcoming years? And is the only answer the franchise model of the Louvre, of Pompidou, or do we have other ideas? Do we have our own offer to be made to build up cultural institutions in Africa? I think that's, that's a, a, a second task. Um, and certainly, <clears throat> certainly in, in, in this society we are working in actually, we will not change visa policies from the standpoint of a cultural sector, but our task as cultural people is to give legitimacy to that privilege of culture. And that is a privilege in our own society because there's no other function in that society so highly protected as culture. When you read your, the German constitution, this is the only right which has no boundaries within the constitution. So there is a privilege to science and culture. And that privilege has to be defended and it has to be defended by more openness of the cultural and the academic sector. I know about your plan building uh, cultural institutions in Africa and nothing uh, to be said against that. But I think there is this, this, this credibility gap. It's not about changing visa policies. It's not, and it's not as easy as saying, oh, we cannot change visa policy, so we cannot address this question. No, the, you have to address the question. The question is in yeah. the room, and I give you one example, and you, you, you know this example. When you, go to, and when you go to the, not far from here, to the Islamic Museum, the Museum for Islamic Art, and the Multaka program, the program they made from migrants with refugees coming to the museum, and they, have, they, they are shown around in their language, in Arabic, uh, Farsi, uh, 
other languages, um, and, and they, they see the objects of the countries where they come from. This, this um, program has been acclaimed all over the world. Um, but there is what, what I see, and I see it even more after these two days, what I see is it's a wonderful cultural program. And how does it reach out into a society that is hostile to the very people going to the museum? And I do not have an answer to that. No, no I, I don't have an answer either, but one thank you to Marriott Westermann. I do not know if she's still in the room. But without Marriott Westermann and without the, the support of the Andrew Mellon Foundation, Multaka wouldn't be actually what it is. And it's perhaps a good example also why um, US-based institutions invest actually more in Europe or invest for such programs in Europe. I, I don't think that you could run such a program actually in, in the United States. Um, second, and this is not an argument against you, it's just to raise your attention to the fact that no other country is so engaged in the protection of cultural heritage and in the education of people in Lebanon, Syria and around as Germany is actually. Um, and I think programs as the Syrian, uh, Syrian Digital Archive, the project for Stunde Null of the German Archaeological Institute, a good example how, how we how we engage. And thirdly, you're right, we are so focused on a on one question to, to exclude migrants or to take that as the, the narrowing point of the, of the current discussions in our own society that we have perhaps, that we have perhaps forgotten what's about all the others living in Germany and not connected to, the, to this kind of new reality. And to all of you running a museum, certainly a museum is a wonderful institution and a very important a very important institutions, but perhaps we have forgotten to invest enough in kindergarten and in swimming pools just to train our people what is a rule and how do you behave when you are equal in a normative way. You are different by power, by income, by social status, but once you go, once you share a common, a common environment, you are trained, you are trained to behave as a citizen and to consider the other on equal rights and with an equal status. And that's something perhaps also for the cultural institutions. If you want to bring that out, you have to invest and you have to consider what is with those living in Castle North. Why did those in Castle North never get in touch with the documenta? Mm -hmm. So you have to go with the documenta to Castle North to explain better what, how do you want to change a society. Mm. When you look at culture or museums as educational projects, educational um, enterprises, um, I think in Germany you are in a situation now that is you, you kind of um, uh, um, encounter a credibility gap because there is a lot to be educated and there are many people to be educated in the very European values in Germany. You cannot rely on that we are the ones knowing, sharing and protecting these values as a society, as a whole. No, and, and we cannot pretend to what, have a set of values. We, 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 we do not, and, to and the point is, and the point is like going out and, and promoting these values, and like you said, some people are questioning them already. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the time to do this in Germany as well. And, and reaching out, like refugees is one thing, but the other thing is how do you convince people within the cultural sphere, it's not somewhere in the outskirts that there are some weird people saying weird things and questioning democracy. You have people in the middle of the cultural landscape openly discussing, more or less openly discussing or in, 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 in some uh, back rooms discussing, is democracy really the best way to rule a people. 
So what I want to say is we are looking at Euro, other Eastern Europe, Poland, Hungary, of course we are looking at Russia, of course we are looking at the Middle East, of course we are looking at other countries in a not so happy state of political mind. But maybe Germany is the place where we should um, concentrate to, to, to safeguard, to protect and to formally enjoy the values we want to bring to other people. Okay, but I won't change my job. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay. So that's for you as a takeaway for all those who be a responsibility in German institutions. Since I'm working in the foreign ministry, I'm fine. Um, but since I'm working in the foreign ministry, I take for my work three, three lessons for the upcoming two years. First is, we have to build up a, a new strategy of what international cultural policies is in Germany. Um, the cultural policy of Germany has been born by the imperialism and the colonialism of the 19th century. And there have been major changes since. But I think for the 21st century, we do not yet have a plan. Uh, and that's something I take home to try to build up together with you, together with those who want to support us, a meaningful strategy of what international policies might be in a 21st century. Second is, we have to reflect upon our own institutions. Are they adapted to the challenges of the 21st centuries or do we have to do readjustments? And I, I just mentioned one example. I do not think that only Germans are in a mindset, have the adequate mindset to be members of cultural institutions in Germany, like the Goethe Institute or the IFA, and that we will have certainly to work on that. And, and thirdly, and that's something we, we try to do in the, in the last three to four years is Open, open up cultural, cultural policies to the civil society. So bring that knowledge, bring the knowledge in the society and out of the society into the institutions and do not consider the civil societies as visitors or users, but make them entirely part, make them entirely part of your concepts and your proposals, how to raise the challenges and the questions they have to deal with in their day-to-day -day life. I cannot add a lot to this. I can only add thank you for your patience and um, for your attention. And um, for those who go to the, uh, to the dinner tonight, um, I wish you good talks, um, adding to the two days of good talks. and. Um, Maybe Germany wins tonight. <laughs> and, and, and before Germany wins tonight, before Germany, just give a hand to the International Advisory Board and to the IFA who have organized this conference in the last nine months, to Bill Sherman, to Madame Triebel, to David Chipperfield, to Marriott Westermann, uh, to all those who have made you come here and have and, and watch together with us Germany against Sweden. Thank you. Just a quick note about the dinner. It's going to take place downstairs uh, starting at 7.30. But please, if you could just find a seat um, and uh, a few words will be said before the meal commences. And afterwards, there will be music by the Yannick Ballman Trio. Thanks so much.